Now available for pre-order on Kindle. John Haynes at Death's Door. A man who rules the world takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes at Death's Door on Kindle today. Yesterday, I made an appearance on The Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack on Fox Soul. And when I announced that I was going to be making this appearance, some of my viewers and my Facebook friends warned me to watch out for myself because they believed that I was either going to get set up for some sort of ambush or they believed that there was going to be a lot of hostility towards me. Now, I'm well aware of all of the controversy regarding Fox Soul, but I had to go out here and make this appearance because it was important to my brand and it was also important to the SJS Direct imprint. Now, I want to reach the largest audience of readers and an opportunity to appear on Fox Soul would allow me an opportunity to reach a larger audience of readers and promote the SJS Direct imprint and all of the SJS Direct titles to a larger audience of readers. Now, I'm well aware of all of the controversy regarding Fox Soul and the mistreatment of heterosexual black men regarding Ice Cube's appearance on that platform in 2020. Now, your Ice Cube, when he went on that platform, was talking about the contract with Black America, and as he came on that platform, he was basically attacked by everybody on that platform and castigated and insulted on that platform. And I'm also aware of what happened to um, your um, people on a Fox Soul show where they had Dr. Umar Johnson and your Cynthia G and how it basically devolved into a menstrual show. So I know that there's a lot of controversy revolving around the entire Fox Soul platform and the image of foundational black Americans, but I needed to make this appearance again to one, um, promote my brand and also to promote the SJS Direct imprint. And as I was on that platform, I wanted to go out here and present a positive image of black manhood and black masculinity as we discussed this whole topic of do we need any more slave movies? And I was totally against us making any more slave movies because I believe these movies are not made to educate young brothers and sisters about our history. No, I believe that these films are primarily made in order to go out here and entertain white leftists, and it's also made to go out here and pick for black filmmakers and black actors to go out here and pander to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for an Academy Award. That is the main reason why I believe there is such an eagerness to continue making these slave movies, and I wanted to present talking points that to discuss why we need to move past the slave movie and start showing a larger picture of the black community, a larger picture of black culture, and a larger picture of the black experience like Bill Cosby did when he introduced The Cosby Show back in 1984. Now, when your Bill Cosby introduced The Cosby Show, that ushered in a golden age of black entertainment where we got started to see a richer and diverse picture of the black community, a richer and diverse picture of the black experience, and that's what inspired me when I was 17 years old to start focusing on telling different kinds of stories about black people, black culture, and the black experience. And it's one of the reasons why I started the SJS Direct imprint back in 2009, because I believe that the stories of black people are not getting told because Hollywood has a fixation and the publishing industry has a fixation on seeing the misery of black people in the period of slavery in the antebellum South. And they get off, I believe, on seeing black people suffering and tortured in pain. And I really am getting, I get tired of seeing these kinds of movies that degrade the black image. And that's why I go out here and try to show you a richer picture by showing you stories like A Recipe for Success, which shows you two black owned businesses making a business deal, showing you stories like 
the books in the Spinsterella trilogy showing you a black girl's journey into the goth subculture. And many people don't know that there's so there are lots of black people in the goth subculture. And because the mainstream media only shows you the white faces, but not the black ones. And I also write stories like the Thetas to show you a black sorority. And I also write stories in the fantasy genre, like the Isis series and the e Steam series and the John Haynes series, and vampire novels like Eternal Night to show you that there are different types of stories that black people can be a part of and different genres of fiction that black people can be a part of and that's something that means a lot to me and I want to share more of those stories with people all across the, the globe and I've had a major impact over the last decade or so working on SJS Direct reaching people all over the globe trying to bring that positive stories about the black experience and showing you that there is a much bigger picture of black culture in my work. Now there was a segment in the Fox Soul show where they were talking about the color purple and I had to go out here and check them on that book and I had to do that because I wanted to stand up for black manhood and black masculinity because I don't believe it's right to praise a book by a black feminist who was married to a white man, but she's going to go out here and degrade black men and present black men as the ultimate image of sexual predation. That's why I had to stand up and speak against the book The Color Purple, because the book The Color Purple, I believe, is one of the most racist books ever produced and what's sad is this book was produced by a black woman now one of the people on the panel wanted to say oh it was about Alice Walker's grandmother no I feel that this book was directed to degrade the image of black men and that's why the white women in the publishing industry went out here and picked up this book and this is why the white supremacists were out here wanted to go out here and give this book a national book award you wanted to reward a black woman for degrading the image of a black man. And then in the, in the, in the, when they made the movie in 1986, they also rewarded this movie with Oscar nominations. You reward a book that degrades the image of black manhood and black masculinity. And what I found troubling was that many on the panel wanted to praise this book, but I can't praise a book that degrades black men black manhood and black masculinity and demonizes black men as brutes and perverts when the foundation for all of the sexual deviancy out here comes from many of these white males. I wonder if Alice Walker would go out here and write a book about white male sexual perversion. That's a critical question I'd like to ask because your Alice Walker, she wanted to go out here and degrade the black male image in the color purple, but she doesn't want to get to the root of it, of that sexual perversion that came from those white slave masters who were out here participating in the sexual violation of the black woman. Also, we're out here after that black woman had a biracial baby, they would go out here and participate in sexual perversion on their own children and after that they would go out here and prostitute their own daughters or and they these same slave masters would go out here and sodomize black men but they want to make black men the face of sexual predation and i would have gone on further on that had i been on the sh state been a, at the, at the, at the um, question continued but we have to look at, i look at the bigger picture of the color purple and its impact on the demonization of black men in the 80s along with the oprah winfrey show and again, that just degrades the black male image. And we've had no counterpoint. And I had to stand up and be that counterpoint. Because, again, along with the slave movies, which degrade the black male and black female image, that we have this, this type of literature. And this is something I, I am going out here trying to fight against with the books that I try to write on the SJS Direct imprint. And again, I want to reach more readers with my work. And I want to go out here and have the integrity to stand up for that work and also stand up for the mission that I have. And that's why I went to the Fox show to do that appearance. I didn't go there to make black people look bad. No, I want to make black people look good. And one of the ways a black man makes black men look strong is to go out here and stand up for black manhood and black masculinity and also stand for a, getting that bigger picture because our kids, as I see it, don't need to keep seeing slaves thrown at them. I mean, we've had the 12 years of slave, we've had 
Emancipation, which is coming out with Will Smith. I mean, we've had been bombarded with these slave movies. We've been bombarded with negativity for the last 20 years. And it's time for us to start seeing some other pictures of the black community like I saw during the 80s because I think I was blessed to grow up during the late 80s and early 90s when you had men like Bill Cosby out here looking to present positive images of black people. You had guys like Robert Townsend out here elevating the black image. You had the Hudlin brothers. You had Bill Duke. You had Spike Lee. You had many others. And they were giving us a balanced and humanized picture. But when I look at today's image of black manhood and black masculinity and black womanhood and black femininity, I feel like I'm taking a step back to the 1930s and the dark days of the Jim Crow era, where the only images we get to see are of black people fa failing, black people losing, and that's why I'm tired of the slave movies, and I'm even more tired that many of these slave movies are coming from black filmmakers who should be trying to elevate our image. I mean, if I had the opportunity to go out here and make films, I'm not going to want to degrade the black image because as a creator, I know I'm responsible for what content I create and I'm responsible for inspiring people to go out here and do better. And that's something I do on this channel every day is try to create content that it inspires and uplifts brothers and sisters and helps them see a bigger and better picture. This is why I talk about black fantasy. This is why I talk about black science fiction. This is why I write and publish black fantasy and go out here and show you again different pictures because I want kids to see a and adults to see a larger world than the hood, than the streets, or hearing, oh, we came from slavery. Where are the films about the free men of color, like your Benjamin Banneker? Where are the films about guys like a Frederick Douglass? I mean, that's another critical question I have to ask. And where are the films about our black inventors? Where are, like, the man who invented the air conditioner and many of the other black inventors out here? I mean, I don't see any stories made about those black people, and I don't see many of the studios pushing those films. I don't really see that going on, no. I mean, every time they make something, it's either about downtrodden black people or breathing brand new life into stereotypes, but we don't see any of the humanized black people like Bill Cosby was doing on The Cosby Show or during that golden age of the late 80s and 90s. I mean, I don't see that type of media, and I'm just, again, tired of these slave movies. And again, I had to stand up for um, producing something more positive, and I also wanted to reach a larger audience of people out here. And that's why I did the show on Fox Soul, and again, I wanted to do that because, again, I wanted to expand my audience, expand my brand, and I wanted to reach new people and hopefully get some more book sales. I wanted to go out here and do something positive. And yes, I know that there are a lot of people who run into a lot of negativity, and I know about a lot of what's going on, but I know what I want to represent as a black man. I know what I want to represent as related to the black image, and I try to stand up for that black image because I want to go out here and be an image of positive, a positive example of black manhood and black masculinity. And I want to go out here and practice what I preach on the SJS Direct Imprint and many of my books. So that's why I was out here making that appearance on Fox Soul. And if you want to see that appearance on Fox Soul, I will leave a link to the channel on in the description box and you can check out that appearance on Fox Soul for yourself. And if you want to pick up some of the positive books on the SJS Direct Imprint, like the Isis series, the e Steam series, the John Hayes series, and the books of the Spencer Rail Trilogy, and many of my nonfiction books, you can find all those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on other online booksellers like Barnes & Noble, Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose. The man who rules the world runs into the irresistible force of a man with nothing to lose in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. It's the regular and variant editions of John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose on Amazon.